termites. It's episode 42. How crazy is that? Look at all these things we have to talk about. Oh my God. Um, it is crazy. It's episode 42 and my road calendar is getting a little crowded. And I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep doing this, but termites, I need to know. What if I did it every other week? No! Boo! Boo! Oh, oh, paddles. I'll try to do it every week. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed by this road schedule. And thank God I have really good agents. And they just keep firing stuff like all the way into November, ah, November of 2022. I'm like, wait a minute. Are we talking about the November after the November I haven't lived yet? I think we are. But I'm grateful to have the work, and I like all the cities that I'm seeing, um, minus a couple, which won't be named. Um, what, what, when do the well, tickets go on sale? Tickets go on sale June 4th. When are they announced? They're announced on June 1st. Yeah. With some sort of video I haven't done yet. Fuck. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of horseshit. I have to look. I don't have to look nice for this. I know you guys don't care. I just throw on my glasses and put my hair in a ponytail. But like. For a video like that, like, you know, people that are picky see that. And then I gotta like, oh, I gotta go get a haircut tomorrow and then doll up. Try to find my makeup. Doll I don't even know where it is. And yeah, I know none of it's any good. I know the mascara it can't be good. There's no fucking way that no. it can be good anymore. No. The eye pencil I got ripped off at Sephora. <laughs> like, I'm gonna say, fuck you, NARS. That is horse shit. The, the pencil doesn't even come out or I'm not doing it right. So then I went on YouTube to see if I'm not doing my eye pencil right or maybe I can't see because I'm old. No, it just doesn't work. <laughs> well, why don't you go take it back to Sephora? I'm not driving. Nope. No. Nope. And I hate going into Sephora because those, you because know, I'm always like burnt from sunburnt from golf or whatever. Even if I put on sunblock, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then those young, super white, pasty, pretty girls run up and go, oh my God, do you need something for that redness? <laughs> it's called Irish. What's wrong with your face? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, this is the color it's been since I've been seven. <laughs> Especially in the summer. <laughs> all right. Um, let's get to it. First of all, I want to say thanks some termites. There's no reason to send me anything, but it's very nice if you do. Um, just nice, stupid stuff, fun stuff. This lady, I have to find out. Anne, I won't say people's last names in case they don't want to be said out loud. Anne, and Anne's from Louisville, Kentucky, sent me, um, first of all, it made me laugh too, because these are very good golf balls for you people who don't know. These are Titleist, top of the line. How about Papa Phil winning the, winning the PGA Championship? Is it really a sport when 51 year olds can beat children? <laughs> Golf is a game. It's a game. It's a game. I will argue until I'm dead. It's not a sport. Fat guys can win. Yeah. What a, name any other sport where a fifth, maybe Michael Jordan at 51 maybe could have scored, you know, beat some younger people. But I do, I do love golf. And then she said she found this ball in the rough and sent it along. And bizarrely enough, I have the clover balls. Why? For St. Patrick's Day, and I still have like five left in my bag. And then Perfect. I think. When I lose those, I'm going to be very sad when I lose the last one. Well, it's not really the last one, though, is it? Because now I have an extra one. Just the fact that one of you is funny enough to send me a ball you found in the rough. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to send that on to Kathleen. And guess who appreciates it? Kathleen. Kathleen. And these are good. I've never even seen these Title X AVX. Um, because my brother always gets frustrated. Like, he'll see me sometimes with a really expensive ball. He'll go, what are you? You don't even know how to use that ball. I'm like, I know I don't, Pat, but I can afford it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Just to rub it in a little bit more. So, and then this made me laugh too. This is from Elisa, a uh, member of the Termite Squad, and uh, out of, I believe, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sent me a Bucky's glass. How great is that? Oh, That's yeah. practical, fun, and happy. And how many times have I been in Bucky's? Like a million, and I've never seen these pint glasses. No, you're it, too excited by the jerky. <laughs> I'm excited by the jerky bar. I'm overexcited by that, and then I get excited about um, like the onesies and stuff. Because then I think of my friend uh, Kathy in Atlanta, because mm -hmm. I think she would look good in a Bucky's onesie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Kathy's like a gas station food person like me. She would like it. So I don't know. I get distracted by the closing. So thank you for that. And then 
Um, oh, she sent this too. Is this Stevie? Yeah. yeah. St. Stevie Candle, which is great because Walter's burning out and another one's burning she out. She made it, I think. She did make it. Yeah, she has her own little company called Texra. You can go to texrah.com if you want little celebrity candles. Um, we'll put it in the show notes. Well, we'll put it in the show notes. Uh, candles plus gifts. I haven't gone to the website yet. Oh, shit, I just blew out Stevie with the whack. Fire! 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 I don't know. I may have cut the wick too short. God. That's all me. <laughs> wow. This is why it's nice to finally be old and have your own house. I'll set shit on fire if I want. <laughs> my yeah. God, it's my goddamn house. <laughs> okay, termites. So that's some stuff that came along, which was fun. Oh, and she also said this golf tee, which, you know what? One can never have enough tees. Um, what are, well, I think the biggest breaking news for the ranch. Do you have any ranch? Do you have any ranch? Do you have any ranch? Oh, my God. And I hate to say it, but I want these. And I'm going to do this before we even go into what we're eating or what we're drinking. Well, actually, no. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, Hidden Valley Ranch is collaborating with Crocs, this shoe. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I've never wanted Crocs, but I want these. I have Post Malone ones. You have Post Malone Crocs? Yeah, I love them. You love them? I love Post. Well, you love Post Malone. Yeah. I like his songs. He's I feel guy. like he's disturbed. He's got facial tattoos. I know. Anybody, <laughs> the face tattoo is where you lose me. Like, how do you show up at Thanksgiving? He does love Bud Light. Yeah. I like his music. Yeah, you do. I just feel like maybe somebody neglected him a little bit. Well, that's why I'm here. Maybe he could have had a little <laughs> bit more attention. It. I don't know. I'm judging <laughs> off of old people things. Yeah, mm. old. This person wrote, I don't even know who wrote this article, takeout.com. I think I'm about nine years old to understand high-priced streetwear. I'm talking kids spending $500 on the ugliest sneakers you've ever seen. Well, ugly to you, probably not to them. Size zero zero white girls pulling their hair into shoddy cornrows. Sixteen year old masterminds selling X. Okay, T-shirts. I get it. This person doesn't like what young people are doing. Meanwhile, I'm tucking my buck cherry concert tee into. Okay, bah, 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 bah. the latest in streetwear innovation must be the most maybe the most baffling. Hidden Valley Ranch and Crocs have teamed up to create the Hidden Valley Ranch X Croc Classic Clog. Oh, yeah. It's so cute, but wait till you hear the rest of it. According to a press release from The Takeout, the brands have teamed up with California Street brand The Hundreds for the drop. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't like the term. I, I, I will never say, I have a CD dropping on Tuesday. I know that's what the kids say, <laughs> dropping. I'm releasing it. It's available. I'm not dropping anything. It's just such a... I don't know. That is a term that gets under my skin for no reason. <laughs> the release explains that the off-white colored classic clog features green speckles just to look like Hidden Valley Ranch. The brand writes, just like ranch dressing, these clogs can go with everything if you love them enough. Well, yes. there's, there's the key. Enough. Yeah. I assume it's a reference to all the places you'll wear your wild and wonderful Crocs, like on your first date or a trip to H&R Block. I think it'd be funny if you showed up at your accountants in a pair of ranch Crocs. I should. That, that, that guy always takes me seriously, and that's his downfall. The, it also involves a series of charms, which fans can click into the Crocs' signature ventilation holes. The charms are inspired by the dressing's best accompaniments, including french fries, chicken nuggets, veggies, and pizza. This is great because young people love charms. At least, I think they do. Either way, the Hidden Valley will be available in late 2021. And then in my mind, I thought, what would I pay for these? Because they're a good summer shoe, and they're good, like, on, summer shoe. on a boat dock or, <laughs> yeah. or the boat. They don't slip. They're good. They, they, they don't slip. Um, in my mind, I thought, well, I'd pay 50 and then I thought, all right, 75. <laughs> See how I negotiated with myself the wrong way? Yeah. And then Paddles looked it up, and they're going to be 50 bucks. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's a very fair price. And then I, I will never, okay, for a while, 100 years ago, I used to watch Project One Runway. Mm -hmm. Is it still on? I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't know. I thought it was good, though. And I liked it because I felt like those people had a skill already. Um, 
same thing with Top Chef. Like these aren't just jackasses yeah. off the street competing for whatever. Um, it was interesting to me, and I don't ever want to sew, and I don't have any idea how to sew. I flunked home ec. Well, I flunked part of it. And then the lady liked me because I was funny, and she gave me a D. Um, and why did I have to take home ec? Seriously. They kept saying, well, these are skills you're going to need as an adult if you're going to run a household. I'm like, well, <laughs> no, I'm not. Because A, I'm not Amish. And B, I, the Chinese are making all this for nickel. Yeah. That's the truth. I'm not going to make my own fucking sweatpants. No, Who does nobody, that? Nobody. That was my project. Make sweatpants. And then I got up to model them and they just went <laughs> all the way down the middle. And then the lady laughed because she knew. I'm like, I can't do math. You need to do math to sew. I did a, I cooked something that was edible, so I passed. Anyway, um, what are we drinking? This is from Chattanooga, where I was just floating down the Tennessee River with my little pal Ron Wine, if you're following along. Moon Pie Stout, right out of Chattanooga. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's delicious. Chocolate. Did you know that that's where Moon Pies are from, people? I didn't know. Chattanooga, Tennessee. If you go to the Nashville airport, who makes it? you will see Moon Pie everything. What do you mean? The brewing company? Yeah. Naked River Brewing Company. Nice. Since 1917. You'll share that with me. Yeah, you can have some. Thanks. Um, if you go to the Nashville airport and you're looking for souvenirs that are Tennessee based, go in uh, any of the stores really, and they'll have a whole moon pie section. I always bring Lewis a whole thing of them if I'm flying through Nashville. Um, but Tim Gunn, this is what I'm gonna say about Project Runway. They brought up, they said, what's the most offensive, like uh, fashion thing of that year, whatever year that was? He goes, oh, absolutely, without a doubt, Crocs. They're the most unesthetically pleasing thing I've ever seen in my life. And then he goes, and you know, I hear people say, well, I'm just too tired to put on a shoe and Crocs just slide right on. Well, if you're too tired to put on a shoe, don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> it, he was so mad about them. I'm like, dude, they're just a summer. Is a flip-flop better? I'd rather not see people's feet. I agree. Especially if we're talking about the airport and people taking their flip-flops off on planes. It's disgusting. Yeah. Feet are just gross in general. Agreed. Cover them up. That's why I would say to you, Tim Gunn, let's have a battle. Flip-flops or Crocs? <laughs> Crocs. Men As need to get on board with this. Yeah. Men, oh, yeah. Men do need to get... Um, yeah, my dad's toenails. There's like a Howard Hughes thing going on. I can't even... I... Yeah, I it's yeah. I don't even have any words. And then he just laughs, laughs like. Uh, yeah. So that's what we're drinking. What are we trying this week? Well, first of all, we're gonna try a little P.F. Chang's what? Dynamite Ranch. <gasps> I've never had ranch at P.F. Chang's. Probably because I only eat lettuce wraps at P.F. Chang's. Everything else looks good, but I always just go for the lettuce wraps. Let's see. Why would you have ranch at P.F. Chang's? Do they have salad? I don't know. Uh-oh. Too tangy. No. Yeah. Well, I ate more of that buffalo, buffalo ranch yeah. this weekend. That stuff is great. This. It's a weird color. If you like tangy. Yeah. Shouldn't be that color. No, the buffalo ranch is this color, orange. Right, but it's buffalo but buff, ranch. But it's made. Yeah. That's, not, that's not Hidden Valley. That's something else. Uh -huh. It's Heinz. Mm -hmm. We love Teresa Heinz. Love her. Queen of the Kid. No, I don't. But she always looks cranky. <laughs> oh, she's still alive. I don't even know. I think so. Okay. So the fail one. That's my review on that. <laughs> you know, stay in your lane, P.F. Chang's. That's what I'm going to say. See, any kind of soy sauce from P.F. Chang's? Yeah, I'm in. Your ranch? Soy sauce. Well, th why, are you, why are you venturing out in the ranch here? They don't make soy sauce. They just keep them in. I know they use Kikoman, but I mean, if they came up with their own, I would go, yeah, because that's your whole deal. Right. But ranch is like, doesn't go with anything they have. No. All right. It's a weird color, too. Here's for the holiday weekend. Some more cupcakes. Oh. Probably not going to be up my alley. I'm not the sweet monster, but I'm doing this as the work of the Lord <laughs> for you people. And then I give them all to my mom. <laughs> She's the sweet monster. She'll eat all this shit. It's all the kids, but. Mmm. I don't know. Does it taste like a s'more? 
I don't really know. I've never really. I've, <laughs> How do you know? I fake eat some wars. When people, those rare times, this is fine. It tastes just like a regular cupcake to me, though. I don't really taste like. You know how when people have campfires and they're like, let's do some more. And you have to go, okay. Even though you think, the last thing I want is a hot marshmallow. And then yeah. what What goes with them? Hershey's or some Chocolate, shit. Chocolate, yeah. And mm. graham crackers. I'll just have the graham cracker. Yeah. I'll be good. Yeah. Then they made these. There's another one for the holiday weekend. Stuff puffs. Classic milk, chocolate, marshmallows, stuffed. I don't even really like marshmallows. This is going to be really weird. There's chocolate in the middle of this marshmallow. Oh, man. It's a hard pizza. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I, I, all right. It's because you're supposed to heat it up. Oh, I'm supposed to heat it up? Yeah, on the campfire. Oh, doing? oh, well, why didn't you tell me that? It's for a s'more. Oh. God. Yeah, but then all that chocolate's just going to melt, and the whole thing's going to be a... That's what happens in a s'more. Oh. Oh, God. Well, clearly... <laughs> you're failing. <laughs> I'm better at the barbecue part than the dessert part. The bar. But these could be fun with kids if you put them... Oh, do we not use sticks anymore? Is that not okay? We're not supposed to use a stick yeah, you found yeah, in the woods? Yeah, that a fox probably pissed on. <laughs> God. Well, every time my dad would go, just go get a stick and shove it on there. I'm like, you don't know what animals. Okay. Yeah. But I figured the fire would erase anything. <laughs> so that's all of my little delights here, people. Update! Oh, my God. Oh, wait. I forgot. Queen news. Share. Oh, it was her 75th birthday, and what? Oh, she's getting her own biopic. Finally. She's 75 years old. Nobody's made the whole Cher movie. They made the Cher musical, which is one of the very few things I've seen in New York, much to Louis Black's chagrin, because he always offers me tickets to, to go see stuff, like smart things on Broadway. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to go to Foley's because the Cardinals are on. <laughs> <laughs> really, Kathleen, you don't want to go to Hamilton? Not tonight. The Cardinals are in the playoffs. Anyway, I made Lewis go see the um, Cher musical, and it was great. I don't think it, but it's just because I like the music. I don't know that it's even um, still going. And I don't have any other Queen news, nothing. Quiet, 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 just Cher. <laughs> I like it because Cher will just tweet things like, I have a headache. All right. Amen. Yeah. It, it doesn't relate to anything. It's like she thinks this is an actually open conversation on Twitter, which I guess kind of it is. But what are people going to write back? So do I. I don't. Update. Update. Boom. Alabama. You have crossed the hurdle. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. One hurdle. And I've had a good time in Alabama during COVID because I drove down there to Muscle Shoals. Totes great. Drove to uh, Mobile. Great. Mm -hmm. So I have a little sweet spot for some of Alabama. Alabama will now allow yoga in its public schools, but you're not allowed to say namaste. <laughs> because you know what that's going to do? That's going to open the door to the devil. Yep. And by the devil, I mean Hinduism. That's what the Z. I just the fact that the devil's always waiting to get in somewhere makes me laugh. Maybe he is. Maybe it's not laughable. I don't know. But to me, it's funny because I just can't. I don't feel like the devil's a kind of waiting around kind of guy. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey has signed into bill to allow public schools to offer yoga, ending a ban. It was a it was banned for thirty years. Christian conservatives who took back the ban said yoga would open the door for people to be converted to Hinduism. The new, the new law allows yoga to be offered as an elective for grades K through 12 while it erases a ban over the years. Some school had not realized it existed. It also imposes restrictions on how yoga should be taught. Students will not allow to be say namaste. That'd be fine with me because I always thought it was stupid. Yeah. The yoga things, I, they, come on. Yeah. I just, I don't understand that relaxation deal at the end. We're done, we're done. I'm ready to go. Oh, I like that part. Oh. I like that part a lot. God. Yeah. I, I took, I went with Ron and he fell full asleep during that part. Like I had to wake him up and say, the lights came on, nothing. He, I'm like, dude, I don't, 
care about that. Chanting mantras, uh, use of mandalas, induction of hypnotic states, guided imagery, guided imagery in namaste greetings shall be expressly prohibited, the bill states. It also requires English names be used for all poses and exercises. And before any students try a tree pose, they'll need a parent's permission slip? Come on. Why? Well, I don't know. That's ridiculous. I like that. Paddles just tried to make something up. Well, <laughs> all right, I don't know. <laughs> Alabama adopted its yoga ban in schools in 1993, one of the many fronts in the culture of wars in the United States. It was a fight to un and it was a fight to undo it. State Representative Jeremy Gray, a Democrat, first introduced a bill to revoke the yoga tab taboo for more, more than a year ago. Well, we covered that on here. That's why this is an update. His new bill finally got approval on Monday, the last day of the legislative session. And NPR station said that Gray... Uh, reported Gray did not like the language added by the Senate that required parental, parental permission slips and bans meditations associated with Eastern mystical traditions, but he went along with it to avoid missing the session deadline. So this guy, this Jeremy Gray, is like, come on, guys. And uh, then they threw all that shit in at the last minute. He said uh, his yoga ex experience with yoga began when he played football, college football at North Carolina U State University. Describing yoga's potential benefits, Gray said in March, students have shown that yoga, yoga helps young children cope with daily stressors and it improves their behavior, flexibility, and strength along with their concentration. His own practices never stopped him from going to a Baptist church. See? The devil didn't get into Jeremy. Didn't get him. No, nah, didn't get him. He noted that sports loving that in sports loving Alabama, the state's elite football programs have long embraced yoga. You think Nick Saban down there in Alabama's gotten them? Do you probably? Probably. The pro yoga legislation was opposed by conservative groups, including get a load of this: former state chief justice Roy Moore's Foundation for Moral Law, oh. and the Alabama chapter of the Eagle Forum. Do you know how old that is? a conservative group that was founded by activist Phyllis Schlafly in 1972. Phyllis Schlafly, this super arch conservative lady of the century from where, sadly? St. Louis, well, Alton, Illinois, kind of the same. <laughs> Always embarrassing there, Phyllis. Yoga is a practice of the Hindu religion, the Eagle Forum of Alabama said in an email urging to maintain the ban. It added religious practice in the schools cons constitutes a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment as public schools cannot promote the practice or ideology of religion. It's, ex it's, an, uh, it's exercising. It's not. Right. The group alleges that each yoga pose was designed not as an exercise. Well, have you fucking tried them? Because trust me, a lot of them are. But to be an offering of worship to Hindu gods. Well, Come on. Here's, the, here's the thing, Eagle Forum people. I can guarantee you 90% of us Americans can't name one Hindu god. Nope. So when I'm doing my tree pose poorly, it's just an offering to nobody. Alaba <laughs> Come on, Alabama. And then I think of my friend Vic, who, the comedian who passed away, but he was from Alabama. And this is the kind of shit he'd be like, God damn it, dude, God damn, fucking 19, God damn, 64, that's why I fucking left. I just couldn't do it, man. I just couldn't do it. I had to get out of there. Alabama should not be scared of yoga at all, said Rajan Zed, the society's leader, promising yoga will benefit the state students, saying many yoga practitioners are not Hindu. And he added that traditionally Hinduism was not into proselytizing. Right. How many Hindus have come and knocked on your door and said, have you heard about Hindus? Nobody. 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 Never. Ever. The Eagle Forum, of course, played a role in the band's creation, according to Jimmy Lee, who leads yoga and love, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is a great quote. According to a veteran statehouse reporter, to veteran statehouse reporter Brian Lyman of the Montgomery Advertiser. That's another fun. There's a great historical city. Montgomery's got so much to do. When, if you're into history, it's really, and, and they have a really cool hotel down on the river and all that. But anyway, of the Montgomery, Montgomery Ad Advisor, that's the newspaper, the, yoga's, the yoga band's demise represents the end of, quote, one of the stupidest moral panics in Alabama history, which is really saying a lot. Yeah, true. Well said, Brian. Mm -hmm. 
So that's it, kids. If you're listening to Alabama, you can tell, sign up at school. Get yourself in a tree pose. Downward dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just to think, you know, Phyllis Schlafly. The thing that drove me cra- cra- crazy, and you should go watch Miss America if you've noticed it's on, I don't know, Netflix or in yes. the, uh, Kate Hulu. Blanchett plays, oh, it's on Hulu. Mm-hmm. She plays Phyllis Schlafly. And by the way, one time I did The Tonight Show and Kate Blanchett was like the lead guest, the star person. And I saw her walk down the hall by my dressing room. <laughs> I, she, I, I don't even have words. Like there's people that you see in real life and you go, holy shit. Like she's so tall and very pretty, but her legs moved in front of her body, almost like a, 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 a flamingo. Yeah. Or what, a, a, there's a bird that does ostrich. it. An ostrich where their yeah. legs go, for, and then yeah. their body goes, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, she plays Phyllis Schlafly, and there's all kinds of really good people in that, that show. It was a really good, I wish it had, I don't know if there's another season. Don't have to be. I don't know. I don't know if they showed Phil, the end of Phyllis. Right. <sighs> good point. She married a rich lawyer from St. Louis, and that's how Phyllis got all the funding for all this. I mean, Phyllis was well-educated, but also Phyllis, Phyllis went on the road all year long doing her thing, and then she's telling all the other women in the 50s and 60s and 70s to stay home. Right. It was just a horse shit. Yes. Like, you're not even living what you're saying, and then you want me to buy in. You want my ass to stay home while you get to go do fun. One, one fun. Anyway. How about the beer? Hmm? Is she involved in the beer? She is not involved in the beer. There's a big, there's a, well, most people outside of St. Louis wouldn't know the Schlafly beer story, but um, no. It's delicious. Uh-uh. Apparently her estate sued them because I don't know they are or they are not cousins or... <laughs> they don't like it because it's ruining. Look, nobody's on board with Phyllis anymore, guys. Right. <sighs> Update. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, Alabama. If you want to do yoga, you can in school now. And I never wanted to say I'm namaste anyway. I thought it was stupid. Mm-hmm. Boeing-backed startup Whisk. Whisk. Signs of the first deal to operate air taxis in the United States. <laughs> Here comes my flying cars. I've only waited since I was seven watching the Jetsons. Whisk will own, operate, and see, I don't know if I'd get in this, though. This is the question, would you or wouldn't you? Whisk will own, operate, and maintain up to 30 E-Volt. I'm not saying that right. E-V-T-O-L. No idea. e eve toll. You won't even get in a self-parking car. I will not get it. Well, I'll do a self-parking car. On the I don't care if it crashes then, but I won't get in one like they're riding through Elon Musk's crazy tunnels. Um, yeah. This goes up. It'll maintain up to 30 aircraft that will be deployed as part of the Blade Ch- Charter Flight Network. Huh. For Blade, the WISC partnership is the company's latest move to add, e- I'm going to call them Eve Tolls. It stands for Electric Vertical Takeoff. So it's going to go up like an Osprey. It's going to take off vertically. And then it has landing things. And there's a picture of it that'll be in the show notes. Boy, I don't know. Here's my thing. I never need to get anywhere this quickly. (laughs) I'll sit in traffic before. Even private jets, I just, I don't know. A lot more of those crash than, say, Delta. Yeah. And then I think, is everybody moving too fast? Is Is it necessary? You know? Why can't, I know sitting in traffic sucks, but... Turn on a podcast. Right. I've been listening to The Clown and the Candyman. Did I already tell you guys about that? You should listen to that. It's crazy. It's about like John Wayne Gacy, dark things, but anyway. Uh, Whisk Arrow, a startup backed by Boeing and Kitty Hawk, has finalized its first deal to operate at autonomous air taxis in the United States. Um, it's contingent, the deployment of the air taxis is contingent upon the FAA administration certifying the aircraft for a commercial operation, but it looks like they're going to. And I'm going to tell you how fast they go. Um, they're designed to fly autonomously, carrying two passengers up to 25 miles when fully charged. Okay, no, uh, no, no, I don't no, know about no, that. No, right. No. You know how many times I think I charged my phone and I didn't? And I get on a plane and go, fuck. Moopsie. God dang. This, is that not in the wall? What did I do? What if you <laughs> forgot to charge your taxi? No. We all do, is there backup battery? Um, no. Two people at a time. 
I could see people in New York wanting to use it like to get out to Long Island at the end or if you're in LA and you want to go to Santa Barbara or you know short I get it but um Deloitte says passenger and car cargo evil toes evil evil toe whatever they're called mm -hmm. will be a four billion dollar market by 2025 and a 57 billion dollar market by 3035 I don't know I don't think I need to go anywhere that quickly no no and if I do something's very wrong but as I keep saying, you know, I don't understand why I'm still in a car going from St. Louis to Lake of the Ozarks and it still takes me three hours. And it took me three hours when I was seven. It took us three hours when I was a kid. And I'm, not, I'm beyond, way beyond a kid. If anything, it's slower because now there's more cars. Right. And bigger cars. Update. <laughs> okay, it was a crazy crypto week. Yeah. It really was. Like I said, it's a roller coaster. Just you're paying for fun. Boy, was it a ride. Because Elon Musk, who I think we all know is completely crazy. I love him. He, I don't. But I don't love him. But Jeff I do Bob. think there's some people that say he might be an alien. And I think he, he could be from the future. Um, but whatever. He's been mouthing off about Bitcoin and the rest of it. Doggy coin. Doggy coin. Doge coin. Um, but while all the bullshit's going on, and let me check, I'll tell you right now, here's what's happening. And the doggy coin I just put in like a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm going to tell you what it's at. Yep. Yep. I'm up $26 and 32 cents. Thank you. Um, well done. the, the real, the, the rest of the account, which is separate from that, because they weren't letting you buy the doggy coin. Because why? Because it's made up. It's, uh, anyway, I don't, I think it's going to take hits and it's a roller coaster. And again, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a lady drinking moon pie stout <laughs> right. and eating some more cupcakes. So you do what you want with that information and make up your own mind. But um, America's fifth largest banking institution, U.S. Bank, to offer cryptocurrency custody. Boom. There's too many people. This is my theory. It's too far in now into the system for it to collapse. The Chinese cracked down twice last week. That took everything took a big hit. If I had the money, I would buy the dip. Well, I don't know. I I don't know. But I got enough money in there for fun. <laughs> if it gets if it gets beyond the amount I have, then it's not fun anymore. Now then I'm waking. Then I'm checking this 50 times a day, going, Oh my God! Holy shit! I'd rather bet on sports. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes is back to even. Yeah. He said it. Mm -hmm. He was tweeting about it. Anyway, U.S. Bank is going to offer crypto. So this is where I'm saying the institutions are, it's kind of it's kind of already set in. It's just my prediction. Would I listen to me? Probably not. I'd do my own research if I were you. Um, <laughs> this is an update on NFTs. Okay. Uh, this was on CNN. Well, this is where I found this story. There was a video, Charlie bit my finger on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then Jim Acosta on CNN goes, it came out in 2007. And he said, you know, if you haven't seen this, I don't know where you've been living. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in my house, Jim. And I, I keep up with all this stuff. I never saw the video, Charlie bit my finger. It's a YouTube video. And it got like, I don't know, a billion views or some shit. So I went online and it's two little kids two little boys and the younger boy who's like one bites the two and a half, I'd say year old, I'm guessing two tiny little boys. He bites his finger. Mm -hmm. And then the other kid's like, Charlie bit my finger. And then the, the baby laughs. Right. It's funny. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the little British girl finding out that her mother's having a boy and not a girl is way funnier. Yeah. I watched that one like 10 times, yeah. but this one, I don't know. But anyway, it's being it, it sold for over seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars as an NFT. So it's going to be wiped off YouTube. If you want to go see it, you better go see it quickly. If you haven't seen it, I, I wouldn't say drop what you're doing. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm like, uh, it was cute, but you know. We'll put the show notes. If it's still up, I mean, it's I don't know when the sale goes through. Seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Now I could see. Oh, my God, it's had 883 million views. Charlie Bit My Finger auction began on, set, began on Saturday 
which marked 14 years since the video was first uploaded to YouTube. It's racked up nearly 883 million views. Of course, anyone with a good connect, good internet connection and little know-how can download YouTube for the video themselves, but only the NFT auction winner will have the certificate of authenticity. So it will still be, but I thought saw things saying to be taken off. Yeah, I think that's part of the sale. Oh. So if you own it, I don't know, what are you hoping for? Like, why would you spend almost a million bucks? You're hoping some commercial calls, some advertising company and says, hey, can we buy that from you to use in our Band-Aid video? It's the new baseball card. It's the new baseball card, says Paddles. Yeah. <laughs> Write that down, yeah. folks. New baseball card. New baseball card. Boom. Update. I wouldn't buy an NFT, just backtracking for one second, because I can't see it unless I do it. Like it's in my phone. Right. And then I lose this like twice a year and Yeah. Yeah. Those are fun weeks. <laughs> and I don't know how to back it up because it's an Android and I have a Mac Air book or some air something Mac. I don't know. You have the first Mac. I have the, no, I had the first one that was blueberry and looked like a toilet seat. That was, <laughs> those were great. Those are good. No, this is a great, it's light. It's the lightest one and they don't make them that light anymore. Well, I don't know. I haven't been to the Apple store forever because even though the children are very nice and helpful and they're not condescending. <laughs> one time I went into an Apple store and the girl goes, watch your email. And I told her and I said, at AOL. She goes, ah. I go, go ahead, write your own jokes. Yeah. Make fun of me right now. Let's get it over with. She goes, no, I have AOL. And you know why? Because when that guy goes, you've got mail, I feel like if I got rid of AOL, I'd be killing my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. And I thought, well, good for her. She likes her grandpa, yeah. you know? She don't want to kill her grandpa, good for her. Finally, I got a kid <laughs> defending me, somebody. Um, but also, <laughs> I've never gotten hacked. What? AOL. Mm, come on. Me and Lewis. Last two people last going down day. with the ship. Mm -hmm. At one point, I was paying for it, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> you got that CD in the mail. I was, no, I was paying. No, recently. Like two years ago. I was still paying $20 a month. Wow. It's a good service. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> I don't care. I've realized during COVID, I don't care if I ever get an email again. If, I'm going to be like my parents. And when it, when I'm retired, retired, I'm not having it. Why? It's just shit. You don't need an email. Text me. Oh, God. Okay. Text me a link to an article. If there's something mm -hmm. people want me to see, then I'll text me. Sure. Crazy. Email is bullshit. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. Update! Oh, God. This one makes me happy because I really don't like this woman. Jurors in the Elizabeth Holmes trial. The trial's coming up. Theranos, remember this? Termites? Yeah. Remember the CEO? It was all bullshit. Mm -hmm. The judge ruled that the, uh, the trial can hear some evident, evidence about extravagant lifestyle as Theranos CEO. The ruling is a partial victory for Holmes, Elizabeth, as prosecutors cannot introduce e details about Holmes' specific purchases and personal items outside of her position as CEO. She lived in an expensive, expensive rental home, traveled by private jet, and stayed at luxury hotels. The ju judge ruled on more than 20 dual, dueling motions regarding evidence in her upcoming trial. But they will hear um, about her extravagant lifestyle, although with some limitations. Um, the government may introduce evidence that Holmes enjoyed a lifestyle as Theranos' CEO that is com comparable to those of other tech company CEOs. This includes salary, travel, ce celebrity, how is that, how is that, how is, how is that a word? Celebrity. This includes salary, okay, travel, got you, celebrity. I don't even understand what that, whoever wrote this, oh, somebody wrote it in a filing. A lawyer wrote it. And other perks and benefits can measure it with the position. Celebrity, that, that is, that is ridiculous. Um, however, references to specific purchases and jewelry and that kind of shit, they can't talk about. But it, it, they should be able to say this because she was doing this with the knowledge that the money she's taking in, that the product she's saying is developed is not developed. It's all on a wing and a prayer. It's all on the if-come. She told no one that. That's one thing if you tell people, 
hey man, I don't know if this is going to work, but if you want to throw money at it, here you go. She said it was all good. It's in Walgreens. You know, lie, 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 lie. She's on a jet. But yeah, she's in private jet. How do you not? That's how you go. These people are seriously, Crazy. seriously a danger to society, to fellow people. Because if you don't feel bad about that, like I'm getting on a private jet and I know I'm stealing from everyone. I would be, not even morally, morally, yes, I would feel bad about it. But to take the morality out of it, I would just be so goddamn nervous I was going to get caught. Right. And then go to jail. Like, let's start with that bef to try to not say I'm a better human than her, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a logical human and I would be scared shitless. They don't even care. No. She stayed at luxury hotels. But then they're going to say other CEOs did it. Yeah, but the CEO of Delta, my old, my old favorite one, Richard Anderson, because mm -hmm. he did the videos on Delta. He'd go, hi, welcome to Delta Airlines. We're one big global. And I'm like, ah! Redundant, <laughs> Richard. And then just to make fun of it, I couldn't wait for it to happen on every Delta flight because he go, we're one big, global, giant, enormous, humongous airline. <laughs> yeah. But like Richard. Now he's in charge of Amtrak. <laughs> he, he did. He went over to Amtrak. Good for him. How's that going, Richard? You keeping those trains on the tracks? I hope so. Mm -hmm. When's somebody going to update that? Anybody been to Europe ever? <laughs> Fuck. Um, but yes, you can say, well, Richard Anderson, the CEO of Delta, I'm sure, well, he probably flies on Delta. That's a bad example. But uh, yeah, they fly privately. Yeah, they have giant homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Richard also knows for sure if Delta's making money this quarter. Right. He, this lady's full of shit. Right. So the money she's using for this crap is somebody else's money that she lied to. It's stealing. At the height of Theranos, the startup was valued at $9 billion and Holmes was touted as the world's youngest self-made billionaire. The company collapsed in 2018 following a Wall Street Journal investigation that revealed failings in the blood testing technology. So, they're also fighting about whether they can show text, text messages between her and that Balwani guy who was her partner slash boyfriend. Um, there's one where he texted her saying the Theranos lab is a, quote, fucking disaster zone, adding he would work on fixing this. They both pled not guilty to a dozen criminal wire fraud charges in connection with deceiving investors, patients, and doctors. Yeah, they told some people they had cancer and they didn't have cancer. I mean, uh, I don't know. I can't wait. Just saying that. Because I don't think these people should be allowed to run around public. Because there's all kinds of normal people like me that are going to get tricked by these people. Now, here's a real controversy. How many of you have ever, ever eaten a Frito, uh, well, Frito-Lay makes the Flaming Hot Cheetos? Yeah, they're great. You love them? Yeah. Well, not I don't. as much as the White Cheddar ones. Oh, the yeah. White Cheddar Cheetos. Yeah. I prefer just a regular run-of-the-mill Cheeto. Yeah. I try not to have them if there's kids under the age of uh, 10 in this house because then all of my furniture becomes orange. <laughs> they really should say on the package of any Cheeto, for adults. For adults who, know, who can wash their hands. That's what they don't tell you. And then you wonder, like, when your hands are all orange after eating Cheetos, you're like, what did I just eat? Like, what kind of chemical... Don't think, I would say don't think about it too hard. Nope. But here's what I will say. There is a big problem here, um, and it even involves Eva Longoria and a movie. Yeah. Oh. I didn't even know this was a thing. I didn't know this happened. Until, and I have two articles, so I have to kind of pick through it. But So I can honestly say I don't know that I've ever had a Flaming Hot Cheeto, probably because I just like Cheetos. I probably never went for the Flaming Hot. I'm going to have to try some now that I've, I'm going to get into this. So there's a guy who claimed to have invented Flaming Hot Cheetos. He's finding himself in hot water this week after a new investigative report from the LA Times claims that he had no part in creating the popular snack. It is the ultimate rags to Rich's story. Rich's story. I, I never even heard of this guy. Richard Montanez got his start as a janitor at Frito-Lay's Rancho Cucamonga. I know how to say that because I lived in California for a while. It's a very, great, great I'm word. very proud as a Midwesterner to go cookamanga. Uh, he was a janitor, janitor there, 
and he worked his way up the executive team before retiring in 2019. This is all true. Mon Montanez, who claims to have invented Flaming Hot Cheetos in the 70s, has become a popular motivational speaker and is set to release his second memoir, Flaming Hot, the incredible true story of one man's rise from janitor to top executive. In June, Eva Longoria is set to direct a film based on his life with Searchlight Pictures this summer. He's 62. He's asserted that he was the one to pitch the idea for the chili-covered Cheetos to a chief executive officer at the company, but according to the LA Times, he wasn't actually behind the brains behind the spicy snack. The Times interviewed more than a dozen Frito-Lay employees and consulted archival records before publishing the report over the weekend. None of our records show Richard was involved in any capacity in the flaming hot test market. Frito-Lay wrote in a statement to the Times. We have interviewed multiple personnel who were involved in the test market, and all of them indicate that Richard was not involved in any capacity. That does not mean we don't celebrate Richard, but the facts do not support the, sur sur the urban legend. So if he didn't invent them, well, who did? Well, a few people, according to Frito-Lay, including a, janitor, a junior employee in the company, Lynn Greenfield, who was tasked with developing the new brand in 1989 and worked with the team to see it to fruition. In 2018... They launched an internal investigation when Greenfield reached out to them about Montana's claims. It's disappointing that 20 years later, someone who played no role in the project would begin to claim our experience as his own and then personally profit from it, she told the Times. <laughs> Frito-Lay, which released its first ever Cheeto cookbook. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's great. They're like $500 on eBay. $500 for a Cheeto cookbook? On eBay. On eBay? Yeah, you had to win them. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. I tried to get one. She also shared the following statement. This lady who says she was part of the team. <laughs> we value Richard's many contributions to our company, especially his insights into Hispanic customers, but we do not credit the creation of the Flaming Hot Cheeto or any Flaming Hot products to him. However, the investigation did note that Montana's was involved in the launch of Frito-Lay's Sabrositas Sub product line, which was aimed specifically at the Latino market and included Flaming Hot Popcorn and lime and chili Fritos. Oh. Well, I have seen the lime Fritos. I wouldn't, I no. never bought them, but. Um, the author, who started speaking about his role, shared a video on his Instagram page in response to the story. I don't care what room you're in, there's always somebody in the room that's going to steal your destiny. Huh? That's a big statement. Mm -hmm. They may even say you never existed. I want you to do this. Write down your history, because if you don't, someone else will. Remember that. And also remember this. The best way to destroy a positive message is to destroy the messenger. Never allow it to happen to you. I'm certainly not going to allow it to happen to me. Wow. Yep. He stands by his claim. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Frito-Lay had something called the Method Improvement Program, looking for ideas. It kind of inspired me, so I was at these different ideas for flavors and products. The only difference is what I did is I made the product, and is I made the product instead of just writing the idea and sending it. They would forward over those products to the appropriate people, and I didn't know because I wasn't a frontline worker. Nobody was telling me this is how executive works. I w executives work. I wasn't a supervisor. I was the least of the least, and I think that might be one of the reasons why they don't have any documentation on me. Why would they? So he's saying he made some ch flaming hot Cheetos, sent them to corporate, and then they stole the idea. I wouldn't put it past people to do that. Nope. I think the film is going to inspire people to do the right thing. Don't make the mistakes Mont Montana has made. Document everything. The story isn't about hot Cheetos. This this the whole thing that we're just arguing about flaming hot Cheetos. I, <laughs> I can't even, like, I, yeah. I, it's an overwhelmingly, this is a story about over, uh, overcoming adversity and racial discrimination. Um, Cheeto adversity. Well, <laughs> and then this other article went a little deeper into it. And this is where I go, okay. Somebody better get their ducks in an order because Eva Longoria is already making a movie about the guy. And if, if it's all bullshit, that's a problem. Right. He, he's additionally, he's written a best-selling book about his remarkable tale. And he commands 50 grand for motivational speeches. What? Yeah. Wow. Which include regular references of what he claims is his role in creating the cult spicy chip. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold know. on. I don't know about that. Um, they say he was not in the, the test market area. He says he sent it to corporate. There has to be proof of this somewhere. Mm -hmm. Not that I really give a shit. Let the guy run with it, is what I would say. <laughs> yeah. Bye.
Bye. He's had a 40 year plus career at PepsiCo and made an incredible impact on our business. His insights and idea on how to better serve Hispanic customers were invaluable and directed result directly resulted in the success of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. To be clear, we have no reason to doubt the stories he shares about taking the initiative to create new products. So now they're kind of backtracking. Uh, Evil and Goria and everybody's standing by the Cheeto man. And then the screenwriter, he told Variety that enough of the story seems true. We're not in the documentary business, he said, defending the film's project. Mm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we make high quality food. <laughs> um, yeah. We're just arguing about shit that eventually is going to kill us. Um, Montana's, here's where he starts. He says that as a, a janitor, he rang the chief executive and pitched the idea. I don't believe that part because I don't think you'd have the chief executive's phone number. Right. As a janitor. Well, I don't know how you would get to, and I don't think. You clean his office. Yeah, but he said he called him. He rang. Yeah, he rang. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yet Frito-Lay said its records show he was not a janitor when Flaming Hot was born. He had been promoted to machinist operator by 1977. No. He's like, this is how far back this goes. Yeah. Shortly after his hiring. Six of the six of former employees remember the inspiration coming from the corner stores of Chicago and Detroit not from California where Montana has worked. Wow. He remembers clearly, Fred Lindsay, a guy in Chicago, remembers clearly working to develop the snack. The funny thing is I heard maybe a year ago that some guy from California was taking credit for developing hot Cheetos, which is crazy. I'm not trying to take credit, I'm just trying to set the record straight. And the first launches were in Chicago and Detroit and Houston in response to local spicy chips that Frito-Lay workers noticed were flying off the shelves. His version of time of stuff of events does not fit the timeline. He said that he felt empowered to invent Flaming Hot Cheetos after watching a motivational video from Roger Enrico, the CEO of the company, that encouraged Frito-Lay workers to act like owners and take charge of the business. Okay, well then you started it, Roger. Who started it? You can't put videos out like that and expect people not to step up. Roger. He didn't start working and... Enrico did not start working until the beginning of 1991, by which product the, the product had already been invented. What? He claims that he called Enrico to pitch the idea and that Enrico flew to Rachel Cucamonga weeks later to witness his pitch in person. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. What's he trying to get? Money? He's already doing speaking tours. Oh, here it is. Here it is. He's, he's, he's got to be old. I mean, he's probably old by now. He, he's getting 50 grand a pop, but okay. that'll go away if they find out he didn't do this. A liar. Um, and his movie deal. It's his, his, it's his autobiography, and Eva's doing it. And then he, you know what he's really going to miss? Mm -hmm. The party. Right. Red carpet. Yeah. Free booze. Won't be red. Probably sushi snacks. It'll, it'll be flaming red. It'll be flaming. <laughs> oh, paddles. Yeah. Funny every time. Boom. How much time do I have left? Oh my, oh my God, look, it's 11 11. 1 1 1, that's four aces. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I want to finish with, really. Okay, two more. Shh, quiet, pals. Yeah, you didn't do much. Quiet. New stuff. Yeah. Nope. That's new, the Flaming Hot Cheetos. Shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's only one story. This is not an update. Because I never, we, this all happened way before this podcast started. But <laughs> I've always been kind of fascinated with the case of Scott Peterson. Yeah. Me and my comedian friend, Kelly McFarland, she's very funny. Um, we kind of like, like, this is what comedians do. Well, my friend comedians, I don't know about others, but we watch like murder and dark things when we're off. Which speaking of, by, by the way, I watched Women in the Window. Woman in the Window. How was it? With Amy Adams and a little bit of Julianne Moore. She's not in it that much. And I, love, I like both of them a lot. Uh, Gary Oldman. I really like Gary Oldman. The, I, <laughs> I don't even understand what I watched. I'd have to watch it again. And it ain't worth watching again. And it's too confusing. 
and I'd already watched that other, The Father, where he's got dementia, and I don't understand what I'm watching the whole time I'm watching it. Now I got into another thing where I don't know what I'm watching while I'm watching it. I don't understand if Amy Adams is crazy or if these things are really happening. And then there's a young boy involved, like a, a teenager, and there, there's a fight scene between him and Amy Adams that is just completely ludicrous and ridiculous. It's so... I can't recommend it. And I really wanted to, because I really like everybody, everybody. involved. Mm -hmm. I also couldn't believe how old Gary Oldman looked. And then I looked it up. He's only he's 63. I was like... Wow, that's shocking. Yeah, he looks like somebody's dad, dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's still cute. But I um, um, also watched... Because I forgot to do what are we watching. I can't recommend Woman at the Window. Or if you like to see if you can figure shit out, some people like that, like a little challenge, then you watch it uh, and tell me. YouTube comment me. I read them all. Sometimes I comment, by the way, but then sometimes I feel like if I start commenting, I got to answer everybody. Are people like, well, how come you didn't answer mine? Because I would feel that way. But I do read them all. Um, so if anybody can figure it out, I, I've read the reviews online and most of them agreed with me. But the other thing I watched, um, which I would recommend as Dominic Dunn would say, delicious and salacious, <laughs> Halston. <gasps> oh, yes, the mini, yes. the, it's like, a, uh, there's like six episodes. It's about the life of the designer Halston. It's a lot about Studio 54. It's, it's and what's his name? Who's the, uh, who played Halston? Oh, um, Ian... No, McGregor. You and McGregor. McGregor. Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. He even looks like him, and he does his voice perfectly. Because I went on YouTube and found real clips of Halston to see how good he he was doing. He does it great. I made mean, it snot. If you know the guy's life, the story of Halston, and how it all went to shit, uh, there's no surprises. But it was good. I liked it. But usually, uh, a lot of times. Um, we're not watching comedies when we're off because we see a lot in real life. Um, yeah, well, there's a dark side. Mm -hmm. A lot of murder stuff, true crime stuff. And um, for years, the Scott Peterson, you guys remember that guy? Mm -hmm. California? Yep. His wife, Lacey, she was pregnant. Um, and he had an affair with that lady named Amber. I felt sorry for that woman, the blonde-haired lady. Mm -hmm. But there was a phone call where he calls Amber and talks about he's in Paris watching fireworks. The whole thing was completely made up. And I'm not saying someone should go to prison for lying, fantastical lying. But, but if you're capable of that kind of psycho lying, I out of the gate don't trust you. Still doesn't mean you're a murderer. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what I would say if I was in the jury pool, but secretly I wouldn't mean it. <laughs> Scott Peterson lawyers say witnesses saw pregnant wife Lacey alive after the estimated time she was murdered and claimed to have new suspects who are the true kidnapp kidnappers and killers. So, and his sister-in-law, Janie, claims to have new evidence that proves his wife, Lacey, was murdered by burglars. Okay. Mm, come on. Well, here's the thing. If there's burglars in this quiet suburban area, um, they might maybe come in and try to steal stuff, but are they gonna murder a pregnant lady, then take the body, Drive all the way to a lake, uh, wrap her up, throw it. No, it's no. It's, it's so. It, this guy. All right, Scott Peterson's sister-in-law said that he had been failed by the Justice Department, insisting she has new evidence. Really? How many? T t since 2004. It's 2021. I can't do that math. 18? No. 15? 16? 17? 17 years ago. And you just found new evidence. Please. <laughs> Stop. 
they should get together with OJ's people to look for the, quote, real killers. Insisting she has new evidence that she says she, he could have not murdered his wife. He was found guilty in 2004 for the Christmas Eve murders. Oh, right, it was Christmas Eve, too. For the uh, murders of his wife, Lacey, and their unborn child, he was sentenced to death, but in August had his death penalty overturned by the California Supreme Court. A hearing was held on Tuesday to discuss a new sentencing hearing. His supporters and legal team are hoping to overturn the conviction entirely. Janie Peterson who spent years investigating the case, said the police in Modesto, 90 miles east of San Francisco, ignored tips and leads in the case. That's what she's saying. There's no series of circumstances that fits the evidence where he could have possibly have done it. Well, mm -hmm. it's not what I heard at the trial, right. and I watched a lot of it. The justice system has failed here in a lot of aspects it failed, she said, and it started with the Modesto Police Department. It started with the fact that they didn't follow up on evidence that showed Lacey was alive the morning of December 24th. What evidence? Lacey disappeared on Christmas Eve in 2002. Police told, Peterson told police he had been fishing in Berkeley that day. When he came back to Modesto, his pregnant wife was gone. He led the search for her months. But, oh, remember when he went on the Today Show and all that shit, too? Yeah. You could, he, they were like, Did this, there's something wrong here. This guy is full of shit. Bullshit. He led the search for her for months, but was arrested after Lacey's, Lacey's de badly decomposed body and fetus were washed up on a San Francisco shoreline in April. Also, I remember him, and I have no idea what kind of fish this is, but I remember Peterson say, saying he was fishing for something, whatever kind of fish. Mm -hmm. And then the local fishermen all said, well, that's impossible. Right. It'd be like saying you're fishing for bass in winter, right. like January. No. But they were saying that kind of fish isn't even where he was at. So, I mean, that'd be like being in a trout stream and saying you're fishing for catfish. Right. It doesn't, you, you're, 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 well, you're just either super stupid or... Uh, Peterson, who authorities say dumped the bodies on the side of, out of, off the side of his fishing boat, was on death row. He's now awaiting sentencing. She said, Janie Peterson, said that she believed Lacey had been killed after confronting burglars at a neighboring property. There was an anonymous tip that came in when five people in the wait. There was an anonymous tip that came in that named five people being involved in the burglary, but only two of those people were arrested in question, Janie said. A Lieutenant Aponte, who worked at Norco Prison in California, called the Modesto police in January and said they had an inmate in their prison who was overheard discussing exactly that, that Lacey had confronted burglars at the Medina home. Prosecutors said that the burglary did not happen until two days after Lacey disappeared. Yeah. They insist that the, conclusion, the right conclusion was re reached at the trial 18 years ago. On Tuesday, the defense closed their intent to set a request for discovery to the county district's office attorney. The judge agreed that most sides would be in 60 days. So this one says more, though. Hold on. Either uh, there has to be a report of the burglary. Right. So can we just go to that, be done with this shit? Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that uh, this crime um, inspired Gone Girl. The Ben Affleck deal. Really? I thought, yeah, I just oh, thought I that know. was just a different story. Wow. Um, oh, 48 Hours is going to have a new episode about it. <laughs> uh -huh. Great. Yeah. That's not my boyfriend, Keith Morrison, but I'll take it. Um, Amber Fry, that was her name, came forward and revealed that Peterson was having an affair with her and lied about being married. He then claimed that his wife was dead. He was already telling people his wife was dead before she was dead. Right. So, come on. Um, uh, his attorney says he's innocent, blah, blah, blah. It, uh, he was always telling the exact same story. N uh, uh, not out loud he wouldn't. Maybe you he was. He told different stories from the Today Show to CNN to all kinds of places. He said National News had like painting Peterson as a psychopath or false. Okay, well then you explain that lying conversation about being in Paris <laughs> with fireworks when you're right. down the street in a fucking phone booth. Um, uh, they said his death sentence could not stand because potential jurors were improperly dismissed from the jury pool after saying they personally disagreed with the death penalty, but would be willing to follow the law and impose it. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel like that. <laughs> also, juror number seven failed to disclose domestic violence incident when asked if she'd ever been the victim of a crime. And Peterson's defense team argued that she's no longer, she is a rogue juror who'd already made up her mind about his guilt before the trial. Well, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. 
despite throwing out the death penalty, the Supreme Court said there was considerable incriminating circumstantial evidence against Peterson, including that he researched ocean currents, bought a boat without telling anyone, and couldn't explain what type of fish he was trying to catch that day. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh. You, yeah. It's little things like that. Like, I've always felt like um, in the O.J. Nicole thing, they had an Akita, the dog, and my friend Kevin's a vet. And he said uh, Akitas are, are kind of like, um, you know, they're, they're super loyal to their owners, but they're, they were bred as guard dogs and they behave like guard dogs. So if someone they don't know comes on the property, they're going to go ape shit, as they're expected to do. That's why I still say OJ went over to Nicole's house because that Akita was out. And if it didn't know OJ, it probably would have, you know, gone after him. Now, that's a throwback idea and statement that probably doesn't even belong on a podcast in 2021, but I just would like to throw that out there if anyone's reconsidering the case. Um, he, th the fact that you can't say what you're fishing for, then you're not there to fish. No. I fish. I know what I'm fishing for. Or, I mean, some days you might just go, I don't know, whatever, bite, and, but you say it like a throwaway. He also sold his wife's car, considered selling their house, and turned the baby nursery into a storage room before their bodies were found. Already indicating that he knew Lacey and Connor were never coming back. Right. Um, <laughs> Detective John Bueller, one of the original investigators on the case, told 48 Hours that no new evidence has emerged to convince him of Peterson's innocence. Well, I guess it's possible, said Bueller, but you know, there's still people believe the earth is flat too. California has not executed anyone since 2006 because of legal challenges, and Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom issued a moratorium on executions for as long as he is governor. The 48, episode, oh, the 48 Hours episode, it already aired. Shit. We'll find it. Find it. You can find it for the show notes, Pat. Yeah. You can do it. Uh -huh. All right. That, to me, we'll see. I don't know that he's going to get a new trial based off all that, but... If you want your wife and kid, to, uh, unborn child, if you think they're coming home, people take years to redecorate rooms of people that have passed away. Yeah. Not days. Minutes. Like. Pfft. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is what we'll end on because this one made me laugh. Because uh, I, like I, I like going to New York City, um, but I don't think I could live there because I wasn't raised in it crowded city like that like I it's too much for me well I don't know I need grass I need I need to be walk outside my door I don't want to get in an elevator I don't want to have to go to Central Park if I want to go for a walk but like Lewis loves it Lewis um can't imagine living anywhere else really um and we always we always argue because I'm like one time Lewis lived in a five-story walk-up way back when we were young and poor. And one night, a guy from two stories up, he came down the, f <laughs> this isn't funny because it could have really hurt him, but it made me laugh. I, and it's mean that I'm laughing, but the man, a crazy man, because he used to pound on the floor and tell Lewis to turn on the stereo and Lewis didn't have a stereo. There was no music. I don't know what, I got, because I'm like, what is this guy mad about? There's no noise in here. And Lewis was like, he's crazy, he's crazy. Just ignore it. Well, one night, I wasn't there, but <laughs> Lou called after it happened. The guy came down the fire escape with a picture frame, and Lewis was asleep on his couch, and he opened Lewis's window and walked in and bashed a picture frame over Lewis's head. What? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> and then left. But he left so fast, and he scurried up the stairs. Like, Lewis couldn't really prove it. And in New York, are you going to call the cops? You're yes. going to and say somebody bashed a picture frame over my head, just hit me with a picture frame. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't a glass. It was like a paint, like a bullshit, shitty painting, like from, you know, Home Goods or something. So there was like a, it wasn't glass that hit Lou over the top of the head. It was, oh but it's almost like a cartoon where you take a, a painting and just go boing and somebody's head pops through. Hey. Um, but I said wow. to Lewis, you're living around a lot of crazy people. Right. <laughs> All this is a story from, uh, this was a legitimate thing, oh, psychiatrypost.org. Psychopathic tendencies linked to reduced connectedness to nature and a preference for city living. What? 
Oh my God. People who people who feel less connected to nature tend to have heightened levels of psychopathic personality traits, according to new research in the Journal of Environmental Psychology. The study also found that individuals who exhibit more dark personality traits prefer to reside in urban areas rather than suburban or rural areas. Our relationship with nature is well documented and timeless experience that is something I missed. I didn't print that part. However, what we do know about individuals with high degrees of connection with nature is said individuals are often healthy, healthier and have better perce perceptions of themselves and their bodies, show greater levels of empathy towards others, and importantly, report fewer instances of stress, anxiety, and depression. Um, so basically, <laughs> they're saying me versus Lewis, because I like to live where there's grass and stuff. Um, he's more of a psychopath than I am. He has more of a tendency to lean. <laughs> Obviously not him specifically. <laughs> um, yeah, they're saying, but also, you know, this is what they're arguing. But I would also say there's just a lot more people in a city. So you're going to have more psychopaths. Yeah. It's a numbers game. And then some people, you know, I think, I don't, I don't really know if Jeffrey Dahmer was, I know he was in, I think, Milwaukee, but I don't think he was. John Wayne Gacy had a house. He didn't have an apartment. Like he wasn't in, I don't know. I got to look that if he was in real actual city of Chicago or like kind of on the edge. I don't know. It just makes me laugh though. I'm going to send that article to them and tell them it's not, it's not documented that you're a psychopath for wanting to live somewhere crowded, crowded. You have psychopathic tendencies. <laughs> nice. And uh, those of us out in the woods and rural areas are much more peaceful. <laughs> God. Uh, who knows if it's true. All right, termites. There we go. We'll put that article in there, the psychopathic tendencies <laughs> and a preference for city living. Maybe it's if you're a psychopath, you just know there's more people you can um, get to in a city. True. You know? Better access. Right. If you live out in a super rural area, you just have to choose who at your Walmart you're going to take out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same 25 people every week. With a snow shovel. <laughs> All right, termites. This has been fun. Episode 42 is over. And um, that's it. That's have all. a good Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. Have a fun Memorial Day, right? Sure. Memorial Day is a good kickoff, right? It's already unseasonably hot everywhere in the Midwest and the South. It, it's already 90. Like, stop. Mm -hmm. It's too soon for that. That's bullshit. I even feel sorry for the baseball players. Um, like, the Cubs-Cardinals game is so... There are, they're just sweating profusely. I'm like, I get it, July. Yeah. That's your job. You got to go do it. But... It's not even Memorial Day, and they're sweating that, like dogs out there. All right, termites, that's it. Ready? One, two, three. Night, night.